Today, we're gathering with Carlos King, the host of the hit podcast, Reality with the King, which I've had the pleasure of being on a couple of times now. So I'm thrilled to finally be repaying the favor and having Carlos on my show. Carlos has such a unique perspective in this space and commentating on these shows because he is a producer of reality TV. He used to be a Housewives producer. And so I always really value his perspective on all of these shows that we talk about. Carlos, I'm so excited to have you on today. How are you? I'm great, Gibson. Listen, I get to gab with Gibson, so it's a great day. So I'm happy <laughs> to be here. And listen, you're one of my favorite guests to have on. And uh -huh. every time you appear in reality with the King, you know, we have great commentary. So I'm happy to be on with you and your platform. And congrats. Thank you. On the success of it. You're killing it. Just trying so to keep up with you. you. Just trying to keep up with you. You know, I'm proud of you, Gibson. Keep it going. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So let's just jump into it. I mean, I feel like the past couple of months have been quieter, a little bit more of like a negative space around Housewives just because it wasn't very exciting. But that changed last week with the premiere of OC, which I think it just brought this just like this fervent energy around the show again. Um, and I, I was just listening to your podcast. You said that it was the best Real Housewives season premiere since the Real Houses of Atlanta season six. That's a big statement, Carlos. That's That was a long time ago. Yeah, that was. Look, I'm good at math, I think. That's like nine years ago. And um, wait, eight. <laughs> eight <years ago. laughs> Listen, I'm good at producing, not uh, School's adding. out for summer, okay? Yeah, math there you is go. hard. Thanks, Gibson. No, it's. I and I I meant every word and I listen Gibson you know me I don't say anything I don't mean yeah. and I knew that was going to be a tall sort of like order to live up to and a compliment as well but it's true it's true it it was so old school housewives yes. it checked all the boxes of like personal story and comedy and drama but enough drama that it wasn't dark Mm -hmm. It was just the right drama that made you smile while watching it. And the reason why I brought up season six of Atlanta Housewives, which was, of course, a show I produced as well. Hey. Uh, just saying. <laughs> but no, I remember season six premiere, um, the ending of this, the episode was like, um, Nini versus Kenya. Yes, like, but it was it wasn't dark. It was light. It was funny. It was at Cynthia's white party, and to see Alexis Bellino and Shannon have a one on one with the remaining cast members watching it through a window. What more could you ask for? What more? I mean, it was it was perfect TV, and I feel like they are pretty good adversaries. Like they're kind of a good, they're a pretty good matchup. I, like, like I think that you said that Alexis won that argument. I saw a lot of people online saying that Shannon won that argument, but I think that like both arguments work for me. You know what I mean? Yes. Oh no, what the, listen, there's no losers here, right? They're both mm -hmm. winners. I chose Alexis because of our iconic line. There's a door, Shannon Bador. <laughs> I'm like, this woman used to be like this, like Bible toting, you know what I mean? Like yes. Christian conservative woman. She came out of that SUV smoking hot. Mm -hmm. She looks better than ever. And I just appreciate that Alexis brought it. So Alexis won to me because of the iconic line, but also because she's not at all who I remember. And that's special. She's shown growth. Yeah, she's shown growth a lot. Yeah. And I, and that's that that it's it speaks to you know, time away from a show being really beneficial to a lot of people, I think. And then you come back and you just like hit it. You know what I mean? And she has nothing to lose. So I think it, it she's 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 doing it well. So you said that Tamara saved the show. She brought the show back from the dead. She breathed new life into it. And I don't disagree with you. Last season was an amazing season of OC. Yeah. But I do think that Heather Dubrow sort of got that momentum going when she returned the season before. Would you, do you not agree with that at all? <laughs> Tell me. I do not. Listen, I heard from a little birdie that Heather Dubrow thinks I like, don't like her. And like, it's a, and I don't dislike Heather Dubrow. And, and let me just give you a quick backstory. Yes. Gibson. I said that Heather's comeback was an epic fail. And I said it was a flop. 
but I did not say Heather the Brother Woman is a flop. So I want to make that very clear. Okay. That a distinct Distinction. Difference. Thank you. Like, it's not the same thing. So, Heather, if you're listening, um, you're not a flop. I'm saying your comeback was because you had nothing to work with. That's all I'm saying. So, Heather coming back, I agree with you, Gibson. It definitely played into, let's figure out how this show can get back great again. But let's have a real conversation, right? That season was not great. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. It, it wasn't. Right? It wasn't. It wasn't. Tamara coming back allowed Heather to have someone to play with. You see what I'm saying? So when you are producing a show, you can have a great talent like a Heather DeBro. But if you're putting her with Gina eating pizza <laughs> in New York City, and you expect Carlos King to believe in real life, that Heather DeBro will be will be partaking in a pepperoni pizza with Gina. I'm not buying it. Now, what I will Listen. buy is Heather DeBro reading Taylor Armstrong for filth for IMDBing her and making shade of her acting career. Now that I can get on board with. And I, I said this on my podcast too. Heather DeBro was fantastic last season, and she made up for what was a not so great comeback because again, you gotta have the right players in the puzzle. And at the end of the day, this current cast of OC is perfection. Perfection, perfection. I totally agree. She needed, she also needed Tamara as somebody who could check her in a, in like a valid way because she, Noella and, and Shannon weren't enough. You know what I mean? Like they weren't enough to, to check Heather and she wasn't taking them seriously. So I agree, Tamara needed to be there. But the current cast right now, it's so well balanced. I mean, the only difference is is we lost Taylor last year, right? And we have the yeah. addition of, of Katie, but like there's something, it's, it's magic. It's feeling like magic for this year. It really is. Yeah, and I feel like Magic Mike. I just like sitting in my <laughs> living room with my boxers on and I'm watching it. You know what I'm saying, Gibson? Mm -hmm. It's a picture here. Mm -hmm. And I'm just enjoying it. And, and I know people are like, Carlos, please, it's one episode. But what I want you guys to understand that I said on my podcast as well is last season was perfection. Like 10 out of a 10. It's hard to have two consecutive A-plus premieres. And for me... I see the writing on the wall in a complimentary way where I saw the trailer of what's to come. And I know that based on the premiere where they're going with the storyline, when I look at my producing, I mean, when I look at things through my producing lens. Yeah. And Gibson, we are on the verge of watching another epic season. A classic. I made the tall statement that. Yeah. The Real Housewives of OC is the best franchise out right now. Yeah. No, I, listen, I think I, I'm with you on that. And I also think the difference from last season is that with the Shannon of it all, with the Shannon Alexis, with the Shannon DUI, there's like a rip from a headlines appeal. This It sort of amps up the, the stakes of it almost. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think that adds to it. So... Yeah. So, okay, before we move on from OC, I do want to know your do thoughts. Do we have to? I can talk I know, about right? that. <laughs> listen, but... <laughs> What are your thoughts on Gina and Emily? Because I feel like they yes. get dunked on a lot. They're kind of low hanging fruit. I'm kind of tired of all the jokes about them. Sometimes it's like, all right, like we're like come up with some new material sometimes. Um, but like to me, you don't you aren't on Real Housewives for six seasons if you're if you're really bad at your job. Personally, I I, I some people can skate by over the years, but like six seasons is a substantial amount of time. What what do you think about Gina and Emily? Um. I loved Gina and Emily their first season. And okay. I remember tweeting, like, I'm loving the new girls. And Gina found the tweet and reposted and said, thank you. And I'm like, you're welcome, my love. Um, They were stellar their first season. What happens, Gibson, is oftentimes... Especially when you're, when you're, when you're a new housewife entering an established franchise... You start to, and, and everyone does this. If someone tells you they don't do this, Gibson, they're lying to you. Okay. When you're new, your first season, you spend day and night reading the comments. Right. Because it's new to you. And it's na that's natural, right? They started to become safe. Hmm. And I remember watching... Um, Emily eating a Subway sandwich in a sauna out of her yeah. purse. And I'm just like, girl, 
you're playing to camera. So they definitely had moments throughout their tenure on the show that didn't seem real. Again, like the whole pizza eating with Heather DeBrum. I'm like, Heather eats pizza that is made from a five-star Michelin chef <laughs> in like Beverly Hills. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, so, I do. But I said all that to say, I enjoyed them this this um, premiere episode. Mm -hmm. I'm rooting for them. I am obsessed with Shane. I think Shane. Shane's I like, great. I like real human beings who aren't just playing up to camera. And I thought Shane's personality was so like honest and real. And I I really enjoy the dynamic he had with Emily. Gina is going through a lot as a woman. Um, hearing not hearing, but watching the conversation with Travis. It's dark. You know what I mean? It was like, whoa, what's going on mm -hmm. here? So I'm loving Gina and Emily already. And listen, okay. honey, when, when Emily said, um, I speak three languages, honey, Spanish, English, and 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 people mouths. Like I, I can read everything. So like, I'm here <laughs> for the girls. Yeah, totally. Is there is there something that OC did to get to this point? to have this season that's going to be a classic, amazing premiere, perfect cast. Is there something that OC did to get to this point that other franchises that maybe are struggling or in kind of the more middle territory could do or copy to replicate the success of the franchise? That's a really, really great question, Gibson. Yes, they can start inviting back the force multipliers on the show. You okay. know? Um, Tamara coming back, yeah, saved it. Heather coming back helped it. Um, Shannon is great. Following the personal story of a headline is great. We love that. And um, bringing back Alexis Bellino, who's like dating John. Like, what? What I feel like the other shows can take a page out of the OC book is don't be afraid to rehire somebody who may not be the fan favorite. Right. You know, camera judge from a social media standpoint is a very big difference. There's a lot of people on social media who may not like Tamara, but you needed her. You needed her. So I would definitely look to bringing those people back. I am an advocate for Teddy Mellencamp coming back to Beverly Hills for the sole purpose of she has a beautiful, organic friendship with Kyle Richards. And Teddy is not who she was when that show started. Mm -hmm. She is a mouthy motherfucker. She... <laughs> and I, and she doesn't give a, sh a fuck what anyone thinks about her. And I feel like Kyle being the face of the franchise needs a, a real friend, a real friend. So don't be afraid to rehire Teddy. Who I don't care what social media thinks. Teddy will be great. So I'm always advocating for that. Okay, yeah, that that listen, that she's not the fan favorite. That'd be an unpopular choice, but I do think it would it would breathe some sort of new energy into that show, which I think is is a very valid, valid suggestion. All right. So before we get to Jersey, let's do a little bit of Dubai in the middle here. So Dubai, I think it's personally having a pretty solid second season. It's it's nice and light, it's petty. I think that Caroline Stanberry is in a much, much you know, better form this season. She's much more at ease and confident. There's good surface level drama, but the ratings for this show are just not good at all. Why not? Um, I don't know. You know this, Gibson. I haven't watched this season. Okay, that, <laughs> why, and why not? Yeah, but Carlos, why not? Like, um, uh, that's a really listen. I'm very busy. <laughs> Gibson, like Carlos King, I need you to answer the question. Listen, I'll be honest with you. Um, look, <laughs> although it's on my radar, right, mm. and I have it saved on my DVR, I need to be able to feel something. Yes, that is um that that motivates me. There you go. I need to be motivated to watch, right? I need to, I'll give you a prime example. Yeah. Once I say this, you're going to, you're going to get a Gibson. When Jen Shaw left, well, <laughs> should I say left? Let's just say when Jen Shaw. But she Shaw was taken left, out. 
Okay. Let's let's be real here. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) When Jen Shaw was removed when she went to camp, appearing. Yes, there you go. She went to camp on Salt Lake City. I mean, listen, it's no secret that we all thought like, well, Jen is like the villain of this show. And like, she gave you reasons to watch, right? right? And so did Mary. When she was no longer part of the show, I said to myself, well, what's the point of watching it? Like, she's not on the show. Mary's a friend of, I think, like, I don't want to watch this show anymore. And I didn't watch it. Four episodes in, I was bombarded by my social media followers, Gibson, my industry peers was like, why aren't you talking about Salt Lake City on your podcast? I'm like, I'm not watching it. And they're like, you're missing out on epic television. Yeah. I'm like, am I really? So long story <laughs> short, they said they got this new girl, Monica Garcia. You got to watch it. So I watched it because I was motivated. I was pushed. The fans were like, you're missing out, bitch. Watch this show. (laughs) And it's the best decision I made, which is why I named Real Housewives of Salt Lake City the best reality show of 2023. I agree with you. I'm not receiving that from Dubai, baby. I'm not being, no one's pushing me to watch it. No one's forcing me to like sit still. Um, So I'm not motivated to watch it. It's not, I'm not saying I won't ever. I... I'm not motivated. Yeah. Is it is it must see television though? It's not. No, it's it's not right. must see television. To me, why I've been sort of enjoying it is because Jersey is a little bit darker. It's a little bit more serious, and so it's been nice to sort of just have this like kind of more like frivolous show yeah. to watch. Uh, but I totally hear what you're saying, and and so I guess with that producer's hat on, I guess you haven't seen the second season, but like I guess from like an overall. <laughs> image and perception point of view like what where's the disconnect for dubai why why aren't people excited about it or or how could bravo get people excited about a franchise that they aren't excited for generally that's a good question i think a lot of it has to do with the fact that it's an international show i think so too i think those international shows work best internationally you know a lot of the um um housewives fans love the other international franchises and they'll say like watch this one or whatever but i think when it comes to dubai a lot of people just aren't connecting to it because listen when you're watching like stuff that's like within the states we know somebody who live in jersey or like right. you know like atlanta and it feels close to home i think dubai um and again it has nothing to do with the production of the show the cast i just think a lot of people are connecting to an international based show that is on American television and it's not something that they're connecting to. And I felt the same way about the show last season. I feel like people just wasn't, I think they watched out of curiosity and I watched like the first couple of episodes. Um, But it it didn't stick with me for some reason. And I think it has to do with it. That's valid. That's totally valid. Yeah. well, okay, let's go. Let's go to Jersey, a show that I presume that you are more in tune you know, with what's Jersey. happening. Yeah, yeah, there we go. I um, love the girls in Jersey. We love we love the girls in Jersey. So, again, to me, everyone's saying I'm exhausted by this season. I'm t- this. I'm tired of it. We need to change, whatever. And I don't disagree with that. The show needs a change, but I actually am very much enjoying this season. I. To me, I don't mind Melissa and Mark and Melissa and Teresa not interacting. I think it's fine. Like I don't, we don't need that circular motion again. The Jackie drama to me sort of ripped the whole season open. It's sort of like now everyone's there, now there's all these sort of new fractures kind of out of that. So honestly, kudos to Jackie for for jumping ship. Yes. Um, what is it? Is it working for you? Are you enjoying it? Are you not enjoying it? No. So I, I really, really, I, we we spoke about this on my podcast too. Yeah. I love the premiere. And yeah, I'm like, it was a great premiere. Great premiere. It was a great premiere. Um... <laughs> Here we go. This goes out so bad, but it's true. I mean, look, I enjoyed seeing Danielle and Jennifer Aiden, you know, get it, get it to it. it. Would, listen, Wait, who, I mean, listen, we're Housewives fans. Did it go too far? Maybe, but was it fun uh, to watch? Maybe. I, I watched it five times. I mean, it's slow motion. Like, uh, yeah. So I will <laughs> say, this. 
I will say this. Listen, these ladies are great television. All of them. Yes. All of them. What makes me disappointed, though, Gibson, is I really wish they all could just figure it out. Because if they were all on the same page about let's make great TV, let's really figure this out and let's get along, like, we're all like good housewives. All of them are. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. if we operated as a team, how amazing would that be good for the show? Because there isn't a weak link within this cast. They're all great housewives. So what's disappointing to me is it's such a loss that there isn't this cohesive unit. Right. And I think because, rightfully so, right, I think because you have sisters-in-law who just don't get along, um, everybody was forced to pick a side. Right. And I think because of that, you have to change the cast. And I am looking forward to what another season looks like with a different set of women. I don't think it needs to be completely overhauled. I would love to see Jacqueline Larita come back. Okay. You know, you know, I would love to see that. Um, I listen. I'm always gonna be a big fan of Danielle style, buddy. <laughs> I, you know, I wanna. I want what we loved about Jersey was that family element, right? You know, and um, I want to see more of that. Yeah, and it's 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 still a family show, but there's just no there's no hope for reconciliation in that family, and so it's just kind of yeah. like at a dead end, right? And so so to you, like these these new little fractures, like with the Jackie Margaret stuff, with the Teresa Rachel Fuda, with Dolores and Jackie, that. It's kind of, I guess it's holding us over for this one season, but it's not, it it's not big enough. No. Right. That, right. that, that can't last next season. No, it's, 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 it's good for this season. I, let me tell you something. Now, mm -hmm. I don't know if Jackie Goldschneider said, by any means necessary, will I be a part of this show? And if that I means think. going against my friends, a bitch will do it. Because y'all ain't loyal to me. I lost my peach. <laughs> In this case, nothing that don't hold anything. But she lost her housewife full-time yeah. status. And I love seeing Jackie and Teresa unite. It's a big surprise to all of us. Um, the Jackie versus Margaret and, and Melissa is like fantastic. It is. Um, I, I low key will have loved to see the reunion to see how that was. You and me going. both, Carlos. You and me yeah, both. Yeah, I mean, I like that Jackie is like playing the game to me. I'm not saying it isn't real. If I was a betting man, I think Jackie is doing what it takes to get some airtime. And I have to say, I'm with you. I am mad at it, baby. It's great television. It's great television. So that is what's holding us over. I, listen, Jennifer Aiden, this may be popular, unpopular. I don't give a shit. I speak the truth. Jennifer Aiden is one of the great, great casting choices that I've seen on Housewives. She's she's a fantastic housewife. She's stellar. Um, I can watch her all day argue with people because she... She's so like loud in your face and, it, and it's funny. And I like what I'm seeing between her and Danielle. I think it's it's interesting and I'm here for it. And I-, I They're a good matchup look, too. They're a good matchup they're too. They really match are. They're a great matchup and yeah. you know- Yeah, I There's feel a lot of things being said, Gibson. So I will say this out loud. I would love to see Jennifer Aiden back. Yeah, well- Listen, I feel like Jennifer Aiden, I agree, amazing casting. She's been, she's brought so much to this show. But I almost think that she's one of those housewives that either would need a break at some point because she's too caught up in making the show the show and it's all about the show and she'll do anything it takes. And I think sometimes somebody like that, who again has given so much, needs a pause, needs a little bit of like, fresh air. You know what I mean? That, that That's sort of my point of view on it. When you're, when you're DMing with fan accounts and placing, allegedly placing stories to be able to bring them up on the show, 
it's sort of like, okay, what are we doing here? You know what I mean? Like that I think is like, it's just inauthentic. Um, Did you watch her? Because I didn't see the full clip. I watched her on Watch What Happens Live. Yeah. So how was it addressed? I, I, didn't, I didn't watch the whole episode. I saw a clip online. So I want to hear from you. What did you think? Yeah, I was I was I was kind of shocked that she didn't have a better answer prepared, to be honest, because she's been basically banned from press since. Right, and we haven't seen her do one interview since going on Watch What Happens Live. Right. And he Andy asks her about it via a fan question. And she says, you know, you got to be careful about letting fans in. You know, they think are they're our friends and yada, yada, yada. She doesn't really own up to the fact that she was giving stories to them to then bring up on the show. She sort of was like, she was like, there's a learning lesson here. And Andy goes, what's the lesson? And she was like, you know, don't let people in. Like, you got to, you got to trust, you got to make sure you trust people before you bring them in. And it was sort of like, all right, we could have had a better answer here. Um, especially because I feel like that Walter Happens Live appearance was a little bit, a little bit of a test in some ways of like, okay, you know what I mean? Like she fell. Okay. So if, if you think that was a test, did she fail? I don't think she necessarily passed with flying colors. <laughs> That's what I'll say. I mean, it is what it is, but I guess like, okay. So, you know, I, obviously you are a Teresa guy. You were her producer mm -hmm. in the first season. Like you are very close. She was just on your podcast and your live show. You have a real genuine friendship. And so obviously you're, you're somebody who would bring Teresa back and probably bring, bring back more her side, quote unquote, of the cast, I'm guessing. Um, so I'm guessing, obviously, you said you'd bring back Jennifer. Would you bring back Dolores? Would you bring back yeah. Jackie? Yeah. Okay. But then you don't bring back Margaret, Melissa. Listen, the thing is this. The thing is this. And I want to make this very clear, and I'll give you my exclusive, Gibson, for your show. Okay. I wouldn't mind this same cast coming back if they all had a meeting with no cameras and figure out how to make the best show possible. I think they're all great. I think they're all great housewives. Mm -hmm. I in agree. A perfect, in a perfect world, you know, I would love for them all to come back, you know, but that would mean they would all need to like sit down and have a conversation about like, how can we move forward? That, But that's me. Um, I also know that's never going to happen, right? Exactly. So that's, the, that's the reality of the, of the situation. But if I had it my way, I would have loved to see. I listen in a perfect world. I am a a product of having nine siblings. In a perfect world, I would love to see Teresa and her brother get back together. You, mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? I don't want to yeah. see a family. You know, it's broken sad. Up. Yeah, it's it, sad. It, yeah. Listen, my favorite season post you know, the the glory days of like Danielle, Caroline, Jacqueline, and Teresa. Um, I forgot what season it was, meaning the number, but it was the season where like, you know, Danielle Staub was there. And then you yeah. had like, um, you have Margaret who like threw the drink on her. Like that whole season. It was like was season fun. seven or eight or something around there. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was, I, I, I loved it. That was it. a great season. Yeah, Melissa, Teresa got along and they argue like, Melissa like, Teresa, what did she do to her? <laughs> You know, yeah, they used they like, used to have a playful argument, yes. argument kind of style, but now it's just not that anymore. Yeah, it's yeah. not that. And let's be fucking clear here: the reunion last year was spectacular. Absolutely, it was. I could watch that again on repeat. So I know that's never going to happen again. It mm -hmm. makes me sad for for the franchise, but. Listen, I love all the girls and I would love to see some new blood. I think Rachel Few does a great housewife. I love Danielle mm -hmm. um, as a housewife as well. I think she's great. Honey, I love Fessler. Like, I think she's great too. So, yeah. again, you have all the right people, but unfortunately. Yeah. And I guess if you think about it in sort of a long game perspective, let's say they go with one half of the cast, right? Let's say they go with a, ca a half that can really get along and, and kind of bring in some new blood. Bravo loves to bring people back. So maybe you, it's almost like you put four people on pause in some respects, essentially. And it's sort of like, let the other team ride it out for a little bit. And then you can bring back somebody once it's all kind of cooled off. So, you know, there, like you said, there are so many stars on this cast that are undeniable and they're good at their jobs. But I think that the the chemistry is just a little bit off, I guess. Yeah. So bring back yeah. Danielle, Jacqueline and Kim D. Thank you. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. There's the wish list. All right. Um, Carlos. 
before I let you go, you know, you also worked on Atlanta and that show is in an interesting Mm -hmm. spot right now. You know, nobody was more excited than I was about this reboot when they announced Portia and Kenya headlining this new season, co-headlining Cynthia back as a friend, Drew Sedora back, some new blood in there. And now, you know, obviously everything that happened with Kenya, we, I, you know, we don't know all the details of what went on. And I feel like right. it's still kind of open-ended. But what w- what's your read on where that stands right now? They're still filming without her. Um, what's your read on it? Because it's a sad situation. It's disappointing. Yeah, no, I mean, for sure. You know, Kenya Moore, I said this on my podcast as well. Um, she reinvigorated that show. Mm-hmm. Um, when her and Portia came on season five, they breathed new life in two different directions on that show. Do you know what I mean? And I too was thrilled that the two women who breathed new life into that show season five was able to be the the, the co captains, right? It was it was there was a magic there. That's like a magical yeah. Time. yeah. And then we saw like the videos of them like walking down the street. So I'm like, good. You know, Hello. So, um, knowing that Kenya isn't going to be a part of it anymore is sad. She's a great housewife. She she's an icon. She's a legend, and it's a great loss. It's a great loss because I don't know who can fill the shoes of a Kenya more. You know, she's. She's in the words of Beyonce, you know, she is irreplaceable. You can't you can't replace her. So it's a great loss. Like you said, I don't know all the details. No one has said anything on the record. So I'm not gonna Mm-mm. say anything on the record, Mm-mm. right? But what I will say is um it's a great loss. She is somebody who is who's 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 just when you think of housewives, you think, think of Kenya like, Moore. Yeah, like it's Kenya Moore we're talking about here, right? So to know that she won't be a part of it anymore sad as me as a viewer um and knowing that you know my girl Portia has to sort of finish the season off without Kenya you know I I know that that may feel like again big shoes to fill like well damn I gotta like you know but look look Portia's fantastic yes She's a, a, another great housewife and Portia's a force multiplier she is spectacular and she has a lot of amazing personal story going on. Right. I mean, hello, the Simon stuff is mess. It's mess. It's mess. And I can't wait to see how it all unfolds on the show. So listen, I'm still looking forward to the season. Um, Good. Me too. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to seeing what these new girls have to offer. They are definitely <laughs> making a splash. That's a great way to put it. <laughs> yep. There we go. Yep. And listen, there, there have been some people saying that like Cynthia is kind of stepping up and going to be more involved now that Kenya's yeah. out. So like, I think that the ingredients are still there, but there will be a big X factor that is missing. But, yeah. you know, so in my mind, I mean, it, feel, it sounds like it. there's like the door is not completely shut on Kenya, but I feel like the big if are based on some of the reports that came out when she did as exit the show there were reports that kind of indicated that she was maybe considering legal action and i feel like that is the line that if she chooses to go that route then the door feels closed to me right mm-hmm. well look i think anytime there's something legal going on then right you know, that that prevents a lot of things from happening so again i don't know if that is happening or not but i listen i just said earlier i want to see you know, um, Danielle Stahl back, and I want to see Jacqueline back. So listen, my hope is that if this is something Kenya wants to do again, because at the end of the day, it is her choice. Mm-hmm. I would love to see her back. She, yep. she, she is the, she's the blueprint. She's one of the best to ever do it. She really is. She really and is. it's like, a lot it's of just... these girls. Yeah. Read the Kenya listen. Moore handbook. Completely. And it's just, I think, I think it comes from a place too of just wanting Atlanta to be back to kind of that glory day feel with it. You know what I mean? It has had some several mediocre seasons recently. So it's sort of like everybody, everybody's rooting for Atlanta to be 
an amazing show again, you know, and it can get there, but it, you know. Yes, it can get there for sure, for sure. And and, and I'm listen. I'll, I'll say this: I'm very intrigued by the new ladies. I I want to see like what sort of mixed bag of interesting stories I'm going to get. So at least from a curiosity standpoint, I am definitely intrigued to to what's to come. Good, good. Well, Carlos, you 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 delivered big time today. We had a great, you know, I I, I love picking your ear about picking your brain about all this. Um, when how often do you re release episodes of your podcast and your because you do interviews on YouTube too? You do you kind of yes. do it all. Yeah, so we do once a week. It's every Tuesday. Reality with the King. Wherever you get your podcasts, every Tuesday we drop new episodes. Whether it's my recaps on your favorite housewife shows, reality shows as well. Or my celebrity interviews. We just did Teresa Judice. Yes. My exclusive with her um, was really fun. So yeah, every Tuesday, check it out. Reality with the King. And you know, you may hear Gibson on too. I'm always like making sure he's available. <laughs> I'm always available for you. All right. Thank you. Thank <laughs> Whenever you. Whenever you want. Carlos, thanks so much for doing this. I so appreciate it. And um, we'll talk again soon. All right. Thanks, Gibson. <laughs> I want to gab.